کتاب <تصفيق> اللہ و خیر السنن سنن محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و شر الامور محدثاتها و کل محدثت بدعہ و کل بدعت ضلالہ و کل ضلالت فی النار اما بعد فقال اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی فی کتاب اللہ العظیم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والعصر ان الانسان لفی خسر قرآن It is revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his early days of prophethood in Meccan period. That's why the message is given in through this verses to strengthen our belief and to strengthen our dogma. This is a very comprehensive and important chapter of Quran. That's why Imam Shafi'i rahmatullah alaihi he says that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala instead of revealing entire Quran if he would have revealed only surah al-asr that would have been sufficient for the guidance of human beings it has the entire guidance in it in a compact form in a concise form that's why when companions of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to meet each other they used to convey the message of surah al-asr they used to recite to each other surah al-asr because it has a compact and concise message of entire quran according to interpreters mufassirin the relationship between surah al-asr and quran is like that of relationship between a seed and tree in a seed you can see that when you plant a seed and when you take care of it by giving water and other things you will get a plant and later on plant will be converted into a big tree so within the seed all the components of a tree are inherent within the seed but it is not visible like that in surah al-asr the entire message of quran is there if you properly apply it so we should try to understand these kind of small chapters which we know which we know by memory which we have committed to our memory which we recite usually in our daily prayers we have to understand what is the message behind these important verses and behind this important chapter there are only three verses in this chapter first verse is only a word wal asr which means by the time wow means it's a pledge al asr means time so allah tabaarak wa taala pledges by the time and says by the time and the second verse is a general statement which says innal insana lafi khusr verily all human beings are in loss this is a general statement a general rule 
And you can see that in, for every general rule in this world, any kind of rule, whatever it is, there is an exception. For this general rule that every human beings are under laws, there is an exception. It says, إِلَّا amanu, Accept those who believe. وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ And accept those who do good deeds. وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ And accept those who counsel each other by truth. And وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْسَبْرِ And those who counsel each other with patience and steadfastness. So these are the four exceptions given that accept those people who are having these four qualities. All others are in laws. So the concept of success in Islam is given through this important verse that if you have to attain success in this world and success in hereafter, you must and should have these four qualities. And these are the basic four qualities. It is like a 35% passing marks. Without attaining 35% of passing marks, you will not be successful. Like that this is 35% of passing marks that one has to have all these four qualities in order to be successful as a believer in this world and life hereafter. Let us go in detail what exactly these verses convey to us. The first verse, first verse says, Wal Asr, by the time. In time we have present tense, past tense and future tense. Whatever our predecessors done in the past, we are experiencing that is our present. And whatever we are going to do or we are doing, that will be future for us and our communities. So time is also a testimony for so many things. In time you can see history. And history bears testimony for so many things. In history we have, if you go back to the history and study, you can study history of human beings. Fir'aun, Qarun, Haman, Abu Lahab, Abu Jahal, all were part of history. And history bears testimony that what happened to those who rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who were going against and went astray against the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can find a lot of message and a lot of information about those who went against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are gone astray. And if you can compare history with the present Fir'auns, present Hamans, present Qaruns, Present Abu Jahal, present Abu Lahab, there are so many people who are similar to those personalities. And what, are, what is going to happen to them in this world? Maybe they will attain temporary success, but ultimately they are going to perish in this world as well as in the hereafter. And that is the history bears testimony and time is passing very fast to bear testimony for this. There is two kinds of word used for Time in Quran. One is Al-Asr, which means time. Again, there is one more word, which is Ad-Dahr, which is also, which means time or age. And both words are used in Quran. And there are two chapters in the name, one is in the name of Asr, Al-Asr, and another one is Ad-Dahr. So both names are utilized in Quran for time or for age. And what is the difference between Ad-Dahr and Al-Asr? Al-Asr means time which passes very swiftly. Time is passing very fast. Time is running out like anything. And if you want to understand how fast time is running, look at your watch, how the second needle is moving. Or if you have a digital or electronic watch, the second digits which shows seconds, how it passes very, changes very swiftly, that shows that how swiftly time is passing. According to one of the scholars, he understood the meaning of Al-Asr when he saw a person who was selling ice. When he was selling an ice in a hot sun, it is a resource for him. It is his investment. And that investment is, he, it is reducing every minute. When he is selling an ice in a hot sun, the quantity of ice it reduces because of the hot sun every moment. So he understood that what, what is meant by Al-Asr. Time is very running fast. And this fa time which runs fast bears testimony that what has happened to those people who rejected Allah subhanahu ta'ala, 
who did not understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are, who, who are not living according to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second verse says, explaining the general rule that innal insan lafi khusr, verily all human beings are under loss. Human beings, if you see human beings, what is the status of human beings? In another place, Quran says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We have created human beings with struggle. And struggle and efforts and challenges and difficulties and these kind of things are part and parcel of human beings. It is also always associated with human beings. No human beings can say that I am free from challenges, I am free from difficulties, I am free from any kinds of calamities. I am free from any kinds of challenges. No human beings can claim that. Even if he is a ruler or even if he is a king, there are so many challenges for him. Sometimes if a person has everything, for example, lot of worldly things with him, maybe he is deprived of health. So every human being are passing through difficulties and challenges. And success in this world is for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who live according to his precepts, according to his teachings. In another place, Allah Taala says that, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We have created human beings in best of forms. ثُمَّ رَدَدَنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ Then we have reverted back to the lowest of the low. Allah Taala He has created human beings in a best form. But when he forgets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he becomes one of the species which, is, which are in the lowest of the low form. You can see that among the human beings, if he becomes a better human being, then people will consider him as an angel. They say, he is an angelic personality. He is a great personality. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala when elevates personalities, when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala guides them, they elevate their personality like with an, with an angelic, angelic personality. In the same time, you can see a lot of people, they are evil doers. You can see idolaters. You can see idol worshippers. You can see people who reject. You can see people who wage atrocities. You can see people who are oppressors. You can see people who go against humanities and do all kinds of nonsense in this world. And big evil doers, big oppressors. All these personalities you can see among our, in our own society. In our own society, some personalities when they go, when they can't understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Creator, they go and bow down in front of all kinds of lowest of low things. They bow down in front of animals. They bow down in front of any, uh, any kind of powers. And they make compromise for silly things. This is all Allah wa ta'ala revert them back to the lowest of low because Allah, they will not understand how, why Allah wa ta'ala has created them. Continuing this verse, Allah wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except those who believe and do good deeds. Here again Allah wa ta'ala clarifies that those who are free from loss and those who are free from becoming lowest of low are only those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who are doing good deeds. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Asr, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those people who are free from loss are those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do good deeds. If you see in Quran, in most of the time, whenever belief is mentioned, along with that, good deeds is mentioned. Belief is something which is always tacked to good deeds. And good deeds is something which is always tacked to belief. And Allah wa ta'ala guarantees success to the believers if it is followed by good deeds. And Allah wa ta'ala guarantees success to all those people who do good deeds if it is preceded by belief. You do a lot of good deeds. You are a very pious person. You are a very generous person. You are a very nice person. And if you don't have good belief, righteous belief, then you cannot be successful. And you are a good believer. You know what to believe in. And you, are a, you have a righteous belief. But if your attitude is bad, and if you are dealing very badly with people, and if you are, by your dealings you cannot give an example of a good believer, 
then you will not be successful and you cannot be a believer. For example, Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in so many ahadith, so many traditions, he explains what should be the qualities of believer. For example, in one of the plays, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له ولا دين لمن لا أحد له He cannot be a believer who has no care for the trust and for him there is no religion who is not caring for his covenants. A believer, identification of a believer is that he, whatever he, if he commits something, if he has, he cares about it. If he gives a word, he cares about it. And if anything is given to him, he considers it as trust and fulfill his trust. And any covenant is made with him, he is careful about his covenants and he fulfills his covenants. And that is the sign of believer. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you see what is very distinct in his personality, that is truthfulness and virtuousness. This was very much ap apparent in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's personality. That's why even before becoming a prophet, his, he has two titles. One is As-Sadiq, which is truthful, and one is Ameen, which is trustworthy. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was very trustworthy person even becoming a, uh, before becoming a prophet and that was a distinct quality of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this should be the quality of a believer but a believer can be identified by brand and what is brand you can we are living with so many brands in our society we can name so many brands panasonic is a brand or you know so many brands we are living it and what is brand? According to marketing terminology, brand means what is there in your mind when you hear a name. When you hear a Panasonic or when you hear any other name, when you hear Toyota or any other name, what comes in your mind? A reliable electronic goods or a reliable car. So that is what is your brand. So every individual, they have their brands. If individual's name comes, oh, he is a nice person. He is a truthful person, he is a believer, he is trustworthy. This kind of imagination comes in a mind of people, then you are a real believer. And if you are not showing this kind of brand, if your external beautifications, external changes, this anybody can do. Wearing a beard or wearing a long dress or having a dress which shows that you are a believer, this can be attained by any person. I am not undermining the importance of it. It is very important as well that you have to have an Islamic dress that is very, very important. But that is easy that you can change it any time. But changing your inherent things, changing your mind, changing your heart, changing your emotions, changing your commitment and gaining responsibility and gaining accountability, this is not something easy. This needs a lot of efforts. This, for this, all this ibadah, given to Muslims is, is, is this person, uh, purpose, to train them. We can see that in Islam, beautiful training system is given. There is a daily training system which is five times prayer. There is annual training system which is overhauling of the whole personality, one month fasting in the month of Ramadan, 24 hours a day, a man is busy in reforming oneself. So this kind of training and charity, by giving charity, a person feels that a money earned by me is not, belongs to me, I am just a custodian of it and he pays charity and feels happiness when he pays charity, when he spends his money for the righteous things. So this kind of reformation, an opportunity of training is given to human beings so that they can reform themselves. And that is very, very important that a believer should have this kind of qualities and believers should have this kind of virtues because the belief, it is not always hidden. Belief is always apparent. Apparent how? By your good deeds by your actions, by your behavior, by your attitude, a person should understand that he is a believer. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, see how trustworthy he was when opponents, they surrounded his home during the time when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was preparing for hijrah, for migration. People surrounded his home in, with the intention of killing him. And among the enemies who surrounded his home, there were people who have given their trust to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and lot of their trust were in the home of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was showing Sayyidina Ali that this person who is surrounding my house with the intention of killing me has his things in my house after my departure from Mecca, Mecca to Medina you have to give this trust back to him give this amana back to him this shows the height of the trustworthiness of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that even the staunch enemies who wanted to kill him had a great emphasizes on his personality that the only person who is the most trustworthy in this society is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam this was his brand this was his identity a Muslim should have this kind of identity again Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says he cannot be a believer he cannot be a believer he cannot be a believer so small thing for, for example Prophet Muhammad sallallahu people asked who cannot be a believer Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said الَّذِي لَا يَأْمَنُ جَارُهُ بَوَائِقَ If a person, his neighbor is not protected from his misdues, from his evils, then he cannot be a believer. Your neighbor could be a Muslim or a non-Muslim or a, a person belongs to the un, uh, another country or anyone. So if you are an evil doer for him, if you are not a good person for him, then you cannot be a believer. A believer is one whose presence always emanates virtues for his surroundings, whoever living in his surroundings, Muslims or non-Muslims. For everybody, he is a virtuous individual. He is a beneficial individual. He is a supportive individual. He is individual with positive emotions. This is the identity of a believer. So, always belief is followed by good deeds. So, this should be the primary quality of persons who want to attain success, otherwise they will be under loss. And these two qualities are individualistic. Each individual should have it. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was training people, he used to select people and he used to train them, reform them individually. And individually, every personality were elevated to the height that they were capable enough to lead this great mission of Islam, establishment of Islamic society in Medina. That's why individually, every person should reform themselves with the belief and with the requisites of belief and to become an embodiment of virtues and to cultivate a lot of good deeds. This is the basic requisites. And then after that you are living in this society. You are living in a Muslim society. You are living in a human society. In order to live in human society, two more identifications you should have. Two more qualities which you should have. And what is first quality? You have to counsel people with truth. And what is counseling people with truth? As a Muslim, you have great responsibilities. Many responsibilities is mentioned in Quran. What should, what is the respons social responsibilities of Muslims? What was bil haq in the sense fulfilling the social responsibilities of Muslims? And what are these social responsibilities? Some places it is mentioned as amr bil maruf and nahi anil munkar, and joining what is good and forbidding what is evil. So that is your responsibility. You have to fulfill it. And some places it is mentioned as Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'idati hasana Call people towards the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom and beautiful preaching. And that's again your responsibility to convey the message of Islam to not only Muslims, to every individual in your surroundings. And shahadatul haq, which means shahadat haq means witnessing the truth. You should become an embodiment and living example of what your beliefs. So all these things are called as وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقْ Counseling with truth. And this should be our responsibility. And this is the basic responsibility again. Lot of people in this world, lot of believers, they think that our primary responsibility is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ultimately we are going to give, uh, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has guaranteed us paradise. Only by belief you are not going to get paradise. Belief should be followed by good deeds. And belief, good deeds should also be followed by the other responsibilities which is mentioned in Quran. For example, here there are basic four responsibilities and the third responsibility is to counseling the truth which means the conveying the message of Islam, striving for the establishment of a Muslim society and uh, becoming an example and witnessing the truth and all these responsibilities is our responsibility and again it is the basic quality we have to live with. And the last but the not least is Watawa Saubi Sabr. Watawa Saubi Sabr in the sense counseling of truth, counseling of patience and steadfastness. What is counseling of patience and steadfastness? 
when you call people towards the truth, when you enjoin truth, there may be some challenges. For example, about believer Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَرَّ آمِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ A believer is one, when he sees an evil, he will try to eliminate that evil by his hand. That, is, that should be the most ideal Muslim that he should have. He should be powerful enough. He should have that kind of power. And he should be having an upper status in a society that he should be in a position to eradicate the evil by his hand. That should be his personality. And Mumin, a believer, should elevate their society to the, such a position that they should be able to eradicate the evil from their society. And they are the people who eradicates evil. فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ وَإِلَّمْ يَسْتَتِهِ فَبِلِسَانِ And if he cannot do that, if he cannot bring his position, elevate his position to such a position that he is in a position to stop people from doing evil, then at least he should express dissatisfaction about it. And he should have a freedom of opinion to express his thought that these are the bad things, evil things happening, we have to stop it. And that, that should be uh, your responsibility. وَإِلَّمْ يَسْتَتِهِ فَبِقَلْبِ And if you cannot do that even, if you cannot express your thoughts, and you are in a society where you cannot even express, then you should feel bad about it. You should not make compromise and go along with evils, but you should feel bad about it, and you should feel that one day if I get an authority, one day if I get a chance, definitely I will try to eradicate this evil. وَذَلِكَ أَغْعَفُ iman And this is weakest of belief. What is your selection? What is your choice? The biggest, Allah Taala has given biggest bounty for human beings, which is choice. Choice is yours. Choice is not given to human beings. Uh, choice is not given to animals. Choice is only given to human beings. If you want to choose and want to become a believer, that is your choice. What is the difference between a believer and an unbeliever? Unbeliever is the one who has made a wrong choice, wrong selection for himself. Believer is the one who had made right selection for himself. So that is believer. So actually the selection and choice is yours that you want to become a weakest of believer or a strong believer. Strong believer is the one who ripples and eradicates evil by, by his hand. And when you ripple or eradicate evil by hands or when by mouth or by any means, there may be some people who support you and there may be some people who are enemies. There may be challenges. There may be tough times. There may be tests. And in all those times, you will not run away from your responsibilities or you will not make compromises, but you will steadfast, remain steadfast and counsel steadfastness and counsel patience to the people around you and that is what is necessary. That is again a basic requisite of uh, believers. And if you see Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life, it was the best example and interpretation of Surat al-Asr. For example, first quality, belief. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was himself looking for a righteous belief and for that he was striving, for that he was asking for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to give him righteous belief and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala mentions that وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالَّمْ فَهَدَى We found you in darkness and we have provided you with guidance and that is the first quality given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bestowed him with guidance and how was his character? The second aspect of the personality that is good deed. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says that Inna ka la ala khulqin azim. Verily we have made an exalt, exalted model of character. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was of great character. His personality was a great personality and his character was good enough to emulate for anyone. And it is a model personality he has given to human beings. And that is the second aspect of his life that he had good deeds and his uh, character was of a great character. And the second, third aspect of personality, counseling the truth, 23 years of prophethood. You see, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was very busy in counseling the truth, in conveying the message. And he did everything for that. And he was very much concerned about that. When a caravan used to pass in front of his home, when he is sleeping, he suddenly gets up and says, if I am not going to convey the message of truth to this caravan, who is there? I am the lost prophet. And he used to get up and to go in the midnight to convey the message. And this was his concern for counseling the truth and counseling of steadfastness. If you see 23 years of Prophet Muhammad's life, there were so many challenges. 
there was battles like Uhad and Badr and it was real challenges and there were so many kinds of challenges Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa life is full of challenges so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life is a beautiful interpretation of Surah Al-Asr so we have to modify our life according to Surah Al-Asr and then only we can attain success may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to reform our personality and to make it according to uh, which reflects the message of Surah Al-Asr Barakallah, Barakallah lana wa lakum wa nafani wa iyaakum bi ayatihi wa dhikri al-hakim innahu ta'ala jawadun kareemun malikun barrul raoofur raheem wa rabbun haleem Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه الطاهرين أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الله الأذين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بعدد من قعد وقام اللهم صل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى سائر الصحابه والتابعين وخلفاء الراشدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم اجمعين اللهم ايد الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم اللهم اخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله اكبر واقم الصلاه